great. <laughs> Super. What's up, everybody? It is finally finished. So, without further ado, here it is. I feel like it needs a name. Post comments. What do you what do you think it should be called? I don't. I don't actually generally name my guitars, but um, this one seems kind of special. So let me give you a quick rundown of the hardware. Under the control plate, we've got two CTS pots, a CRL three-way switch, a pure tone output jack. Uh, the pots are 250 and 500k for the tone. I went with the 500k because the 250 that I had it was actually bad. It wasn't. It wasn't even a dead short. There was no electrical connection at all through it. Um, so because of this, uh, and all I had was a 500k, which is also a CTS pot, I went ahead and installed that. Uh, it does mean that in the middle position, it's about as bright as a normal Telecaster, and full on, it's it's pretty twangy. It's pretty bright, but some people might like it. Uh, I am going to offer on the auction the ability to uh, replace that. I will replace that you know, no additional charge before I ship it out, if somebody would prefer to have the, the 250 in there. Um, so we've got a Babixk, Babix, I, I don't know how to pr pronounce that, I'm probably butchering it, but a Babix bridge. It's got saddles that ride flat against the body for maximum transfer of tone uh, into the body and back into the strings. Uh, for the bridge pickup is a bare knuckle Cobra T, basically the meanest single coil that bare knuckle sells. Uh, I know it looks like uh, it's dual rail. Uh, there's actually two rail magnets, but they're inside of a single coil. In the neck position, I have a GNL Custom Shop MFD pickup, magnetic field design. Uh, I like to describe these as a P90 on steroids. They are extremely articulate and tend to pick up everything that happens with the strings. Uh, it's something you got to kind of keep in mind. They also make the tone knob useful uh, because they are so incredibly articulate and sometimes it's actually helpful to just roll that tone off a bit and kind of round things out. In the tuners, I have Daddario locking tuners, uh, auto trim tuners. I've never actually used these before I put them in this guitar. I got to say, these are awesome, and I will be putting them in all my future guitars. It is just incredibly convenient to be able to just twist and boom, the string is clipped and you're done. You, yeah, it's it's really cool. I'm, in case you can't tell, I'm a fan. Uh, Graph Tech Nut, custom cut for this guitar. Uh, let's talk about some of the uh, comfort features. Of course, it's a bolt-on neck with the string through ferrules. Let's see if I can get a good picture of that. I use the Denario football strap buttons and I really like these because they're sort of auto locking. Once you put the strap in and twist it, it basically, unless the strap tears, it's not coming off. And uh, I, I really appreciate this design. I've, I kind of wonder why some of the older button designs that almost seemed designed to fail are still hanging around. Um, Cause this is, this is good stuff. Uh, some of this stuff, will be showing up in later videos. Uh, I'll explain the whole build situation uh, at the end of this video, like I said I was going to do, um, but there are more build videos coming that's going to detail the, the rest of the process that finished this. We just needed to get this out today. So, comfort features. So, of course, I've got the arm carve, I've got the belly carve, I've got the neck joint carve. Uh, I've also taken a lot of care on the neck to make sure that this is as comfortable as possible. There are, there's no lines, there's no bumps, there's, it is super smooth, even though there's paint and clear coming up to uh, the unfinished fretboard. Uh, the back of the neck is currently gloss, uh, and there is a reason for this. This is not my preference. I generally prefer a satin neck. However, this is, this is definitely the kind of gloss that's not sticky. Like, even when you press against it, it still flows really well. Like it doesn't, it's not grabby. And I think that's just due to the kind of plastic that 2K is compared to, um, you know, some acrylics and certain other kinds of plastic. They just have a grabbiness to them. This one doesn't. However, I was going to go satin, but when I tested using my Harbor Freight gun, uh, I got very bad results and I wasn't about to put a, a gritty feeling neck. On it you know I'd much rather have the smooth gloss however as a personal gift to myself 
for completing this, this build, I purchased an Iwata spray gun. It's not quite as good as the LPH 400 that um, Texas Toast uses, but by all accounts, this is an amazing gun. So I'm going to do some tests and uh, this will be another option in the auction. Whoever wins it has the option uh, to have me satinize the neck before I ship it out. So um, whoever wins that auction is gonna, gonna be able to customize this to their particular flavor. So one of the things that I did, and I, I had documented the process, is all along this curve and along this curve, I've come in with sandpaper at very fine grits, climbing and climbing, until I've just rounded the curve off. And what I found is that, particularly Telecasters with binding, uh, they can be kind of kind of pokey right there, you know? And uh, I do have the arm carve here, but I wanted to take it one step further and just smooth those places out so it is super comfortable. Absolutely no, no edges poking out. Um, but at the same time, it keeps, you know, the sharp lines around the rest of the guitar. Ah, I think that's it. I guess let's get some tones. Um, so my signal chain will be the guitar going into a Hughes and Kettner Grandmeister 40. Uh, I've got, well, I've got a pedal board here. The only thing I'm going to be using is the noise gate and maybe some reverb, um, which is coming from an Earthquaker Devices Dispatch Master. Um, it's coming, going out of the Hughes and Kettner through an XLR cable into a solo focus right, which I keep inside my metal desk drawer because the EM interference in this room is ridiculously bad. Part of the reason I'm using the noise gate. All the cavities have been lined with copper tape and grounded, so for the most part, uh, it's pretty good. It's just this room in particular is, is very bad for EM interference. I am not a good player. That's not modesty, it's honesty. I spend too much time tone hunting and noodling and not enough playing music, I know. Uh, it's something that I want to work on. Uh, nonetheless, I should be able to, to pluck a few strings here and uh, get you guys some, some sounds so you have some idea what this thing can do. And uh, I'm pretty darn happy with it, to be honest. Just the noise gate. I'm on the clean channel of the Grandmeister 40. Basically, all the controls are at noon. Uh, yeah, pretty much all the controls are at noon. Start with the bridge pickup. Okay, and of course all the way. So what I like to do is go max, and then just roll it off a bit. I mean, it's, that's pretty common with tellies anyway. It's just to take your tone up and then drop it down to like a 9 or an 8. Middle position. And first position. So as you can hear, the um, in the middle position, the uh, MFD pickup actually kind of dominates a little bit, which surprised me because this Cobra T is no slouch. This is a serious high output single coil, but those MFD pickups are just kind of ridiculous. Ugh, sounds really good, in my opinion. Um, so I throw on a little, little bit of verb. And... That was the neck position.
full brightness. Yeah, I think it sounds pretty amazing. Um, unquestionably and undoubtedly biased, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. One last thing, throw on a little delay. Uh, throw on the Tumnus by Wampler. I probably shouldn't say it, but I'm going to anyway. This is a kick ass guitar. I am very happy with how it turned out. I do need to specify, it's not flawless. If you look closely in the finish, you can see tiny little flaws, but you gotta look closely. More importantly, it's extremely comfortable. It plays great, it sounds great. It's got a fairly wide range of tones. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now I gotta auction it off. Mixed feels about that. Mixed feels. Let me go ahead and use that as a segue into the other information that I have. So we've got more videos coming. Uh, we've got at least one, possibly two more build videos, depending on how we divide that up. Uh, we just decided we needed to, to get this reveal out the door, given that today is literally Saturday the 17th. It's going to be a whirlwind of editing. But we've got a few more things coming up. Um, one, I know I talked about I got myself a little gift, little prize for finishing this build, even though it's been pretty difficult. I want to get you guys something too. I really appreciate all the support and the community and just, yeah, just everyone out there, you know, giving tips and feedback and uh, love and just, it's just been great. I am doing a giveaway on Instagram. Now, there's a couple things I need to point out. One, this Instagram post is separate from my reveal post. I, I thought about it and I realized it would be kind of schmarmy to, to do a giveaway on, on the post. So it is going to be a separate post. However, that giveaway post is going to be the link to the eBay auction. Because anything I can do to raise more money for charity, uh, that's, that's just a go. That's a green light. What I am giving away is a Joyo Zombie. This thing is ridiculous. For a 20 watt amplifier, this thing is is pretty killer. It's based off the uh, the MB there. It's based off the Mesa Boogie sound. So if you know Mesa Boogie, you probably know the kind of sound it has. Uh, it does actually have an actual valve in it for the preamp. So you get really great distortion tones. In addition to that, it also has a clean and an overdrive channel and it has uh, Bluetooth connectivity. So you can actually run it as a basically a Bluetooth speaker driver as well. You will need a cab. It doesn't have a built-in speaker, uh, but this thing is really killer. I had originally bought this for my garage and was going to use it out there because I've got a setup out there. However, when I when I bought that beastie, it replaced a Boss Katana, 
I couldn't actually bring myself to part with the katana. Everything that you guys have done for me, I appreciate you watching, I appreciate you commenting. We're gonna give this away, somebody's gonna win it. The auction is going up on Monday. Uh, you will need to like this video, subscribe here, go to Instagram, like that video, and follow on Instagram. And then in the comments, at somebody. Uh, I will use a random picker to pick one of the winners, and I will notify them on Instagram. Now, I can't do this on YouTube because YouTube doesn't allow instant messaging, so there's no good way to verify, you know, that I'm actually contacting the winner. The giveaway is open to everyone in North America. However, if you are willing to pay shipping, I can ship it elsewhere, but to be honest, at that point, you're probably better off, especially if you're in Europe, just buy from Toman, um, because the shipping costs right now are kind of crazy. So it is originally a European thing. However, I have adapters, two of them, and they will both ship with. It's a great amp. Whoever wins it, I hope you really enjoy it. Yeah, I think that's everything. We've, we've got our big reveal. The guitar is finished. It's going up on auction on Monday. I'm doing a giveaway for uh, all my subscribers to show my appreciation and joining me on this journey. And uh, the Great Guitar Build-Off voting has started on, in on Instagram. Obviously, I'd like it if you would go and like my guitar. But the reality is there's a lot of great guitars out there. So just check them out. Like them all. Every, every one that you like, put a like on it, you know? And I, I think that's that's the way that it should go. So I uh, appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time uh, with the rest of the build videos.